right for our lunch break rants, New York Rangers rants today. We're going to discuss why Zabanajad is a bust, why he's on his way out, why David Quinn is on his way out. Um, try to keep this as brief as possible. So, you know, I'm not trying to gloat, not trying to say I know everything because numerous parts of the day I realize I don't know anything. But when it comes to certain stuff, I do have a good inkling on. Um, so I was right about Tony D'Angelo. He's out of the NHL, basically. Tony D'Angelo's only way back into hockey, probably through the KHL, probably some Euro uh, European league. Um, I think he'll be back in the, uh, in the NHL maybe next year. The team will take a chance for him. I don't think he's playing hockey uh, in North America in 2021. Um, told you. Told you so. Now, next with Zibanejad, so I said on my uh, Rangers preview video, um, as much as I like Zibanejad, as much as I think that was uh, a really good trade when obviously they brought him, dumping Broussard, um, Zibanejad was a player who I think exceeded um, pretty much everyone's expectations, uh, but most notably the Rangers. And, and as I said earlier in the year, um, you know, Jeff Gorton, the one thing I like about Jeff Gorton, um, he's an absolute shark when it comes to, uh, you know, holding his ground, uh, sticking to the plan. Um, and as I said, you know, the season two, if, if they were going to name a captain, they would have. Kreider's not captain material. Zabanajad's not captain material. Truba's not. Panera's not. Are they leaders? Yes. Are they captains? No. Uh, there's, there's a big difference, and Gorton knows that, which is why they haven't named a captain. Um, you know, Carter's been in the league long enough. Zabanajad's in the league long enough. Their their resumes speak for themselves. They're good players. They're not captains. They're not. They're not teams that you're gonna. They're, they're gonna lead. Not players that are gonna lead teams to Stanley Cups. Um, now look, you can say Zabanajad. You know, he had the Rona. He's he's off his game. Look, the real elite. I'll give you an example. When Crosby's out, Crosby comes back. He did, looks like he never missed a game. Right when Crosby. You know, missed basically a year because of his concussion problems, and you know, 12, 11, you know, 11, 12, whatever that was, 13. Crosby came back like nothing happened. Ovi gets suspended four games, he comes back like nothing happened, right? So they're a different level of elite. Um, now, Zabanaj had season last year. If he had a, you know, season like that this year, maybe he could be in that category, but I think last year was just a fluke. Um, and again, you could, you know, point, it's all different. Reasons why he's not having the year he's having this year. Um, and I agree with Larry Brooks on this. And it's, you know, I, I said the same thing before the season. Him having a bad season is a blessing in disguise for the Rangers. Um, because I don't think they should offer him a contract. And I, again, I said this before the year. Whether he had a good season or not, he, he peaked last year. And I, he's not he's not going to put those numbers again up. He, he's not. I, I You know, he's not going to have a turnaround season. It's just, it's, he's, he's in the can this year in, in my book. Um He's not worth a long-term extension. He's not worth to see on the chest. That's for Daddy Eichel. And look, Buffalo being trash again this year. Like, did you really, you know, need Buffalo to play any games to, to tell you that? So, Eichel's on his way to New York. It's just only a matter of time. Now, I, I don't know. Here's what my, my thing is. is I've seen enough of Lafreniere and Kako. Um, I don't think either one is generational style talent. I think... I think both have the potential to be good, but at the same time, I think the window is closing on them, especially Kako. Um, now, two reasons. I don't think neither one of them are that good um, in terms of they're not a Matthews good, they're not McDavid good, they're not Eichel good. Now, look, not everyone is that good. Um, but this leads me to my other point, why I think Quinn's going to come out. So, a little backstory, background. They bring David Quinn in. Um, they're going through a rebuild. Want younger, uh, younger coach more of a college style coach um, you know developing players blah 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 now while that's all good and great you have to remember this the Rangers are an original 16 all right so now when they sent out the rebuild letter in 2018 you have to understand that took a lot of nerve on their part because if you're an original 16 you have a commitment to the NHL meaning you're an original 16 your purpose is to sell tickets is to sell jerseys you you are the NHL so that's why, you know, we'll use the Rangers, for example. The Rangers never, ever did a rebuild. The Rangers never, you know, really had younger guys aside from the last few years. It was always what, you know, washed up superstars can we bring in, blah, 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 blah. Which, again, I get it. It's New York City. You know, same applies to Detroit, Chicago, 
um, Toronto, Montreal, you know, Boston. That's why these teams are always going to have, even if they are going through a rebuild, they're always going to have either a superstar or a washed up superstar to sell those jerseys, to get people somewhat interested, to let the fan base know, you know, we're not just completely wasting our time here. So that brings us to the present. They bring in Quinn. He's supposed to develop the young guys, but I just don't really think he's that, he's that good of a coach. I think he needs a lot more time. I think his entry into the NHL would have been better as an assistant coach. And a guy like him has got to work under a Quenville. He's got to work under a Trotz. Got to work under uh, a Laviolette. Um, you know, he. I, I think David Quinn has the potential to be a real deal NHL coach. I just don't think his time is right now. I think he needs, I, I, you know, years as an assistant, um, you know, paying his dues, figuring out what's what. My, my, my biggest gripe with him is that, you know, he's still treating it like he's at the NCAA level. That's his comfort. Uh, there's just too much line juggling. But again, that that's what he has to work with. He doesn't really have upper echelon talent to work with. You know, take a guy like Jim Montgomery. Last year, Jim Montgomery, first year NHL coach, coming from the college ranks, is able to do, you know, before his, uh, you know, his off ice, you know, issues. Before that, he had, he had a nice thing going in uh, Dallas. The guys, you know, really liked him. But again, Jamie Benn, Radulov, Sagan, you know, Kadobin, you know, you, you got real deal players, so it obviously makes it a little bit easier. Um, so I, I'm putting the expiration date on Quinn. I'm gonna say halfway through next season. Obviously, they're gonna let him finish this season out. It's a short season, is what it is. Um, I think after the season, they're really gonna, uh, you know start seeing who's going to be the coach to to, to lead them into the playoffs because um, it's, it's it's not quinn and again jeff Gordon knows that i think david quinn knows that um but you know what good for david quinn for sneaking in and getting a job honestly like you know, good on him you know you got to start somewhere um you know it's going to be good for him in the long run just you know watching the rangers now and and, and seeing some of his moves and, and 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 some of his you know tactics i'm like but again a lot of that's on the players so I think Sabanajads is, is, is in his last year as a New York Ranger. Um, Quinn, I'm, I'm saying November or December of 2021, of next season. I think they'll give him a quarter of the way through next season, see how they go. He's going to be on a real short leash. Look, every coach, whether you're good or not, has, has a shelf life. It's just, it's just the nature of the game. Um, now, as far as trade packages for Eichel, what would I do? What do I think? Again, I got to agree with Larry Brooks. I think Lafreniere has to be in there. And I'm for trade, and I'm honestly like, it's, you know what? I've seen seen enough. Like, bye, bro. You know, you're not McKinnon good. You know, if he develops into a top six, whoop de do. Like, you know, <laughs> like, come on. Let's get the real, let's get the real guys in, you know? Um, so what would I do? Uh, what would my, my package for Eichel include? Lafreniere, a first. Um... I guess a top prospect. I don't know if that would even get it done. Maybe. Maybe Heedle, a first, and Lafreniere. I would do that, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I think I think Jeff Gordon's got a, a big gun up his sleeve. I think Jeff Gordon's just patiently waiting. Um, and, again, it's we're going to see some fireworks with the Rangers coming up um, this summer and free agency at the trade deadline. I'm actually really excited for it. Uh, lastly, Hope and Aaron's good everything's all right with him because Bernard's the man um smart dude you know so hopefully all that's good get him back um but yeah Sabanajad I like you bro but you're gone Quinn you're gone Eichel get ready to come to New York bro wear that C all right that's that's who the team's getting built around um interested to see I'd like to see Eichel and Panera on the, on the same line gonna be filthy gonna be filthy all right that's what we got shredneck out